this Instagram being difficult. What's up, guys? When somebody gets on, let me know if they can hear me and see me. Having a little bit of a technical difficulty with Instagram today, so we may have to punt on that, but we'll see. There we go. All right. In the meantime, you know the drill. You're not listening yet, so it doesn't matter, but I'm going to go ahead and share this around. And today we're going to talk about, among whatever else you want to talk about, if affiliate marketing is better or freelancing is better or, you know, anything else that you want to talk about. Got somebody on Instagram. What's up? Your, your username's too difficult to pronounce. Like I say, once you get on, if you could just let me know that you're here. Let me know if that you can hear and see me okay. I'm sure that you can, but there was one day that I had the microphone muted, and that, so that was embarrassing. And in the meantime, I'm just gonna share this around and get us some folks on. A little earlier in the day than usual today because I have pretty packed schedule the rest of the day. Craig says, hey, Chris, sounds good. Thank you for that, Craig. Thanks for showing up as well. Hope you're doing well. As, as Assad, I'm just going to say Assad. I hope that's not disrespectful. Uh, asks, hey, Chris, what do you think about Amazon affiliate for a current situation? I think that Amazon proved that they don't care about their affiliates. And I think it's only a matter of time before they shut the program down entirely. And I would find other ways to monetize our, your blog or your, however you're doing your affiliate. Rich says, howdy, howdy, Rich. Let's send out the email real quick. So forgive me for the early stage here where we're being a little unprofessional. So I do apologize for that. Andy says, I don't think affiliate marketing is really dead. What do you think? Nothing is ever dead. And until literally no one can do it. I think that Amazon affiliate marketing is dead. I don't know why anyone would send them any traffic, but no affiliate marketing as a whole industry is definitely not dead. And, you know, eh, sometimes I have to use clickbait. So if that's what you're at, why you're asking, that's kind of why, but I definitely think it's going to hurt a lot of people. I think it probably already has, or it will when it starts next week, but no, it's not dead as an industry by any by any means. Excuse me just a second, guys. Saad says, "Can I? Thanks for reply. Can I join you in social media like Facebook? Absolutely. You can check out uh, here. I'll drop my Facebook page, and then of course you can check out the legit Facebook group and the Superstar SEO Facebook group, and so on." Rich Dufour says, where are the sunglasses? You know, I, that was kind of my trademark early on. I stopped doing that because, well, for a couple of reasons. One is I think it made me look like an unstoppable douchebag, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. And then also it was kind of hurting my eyes to wear them indoors. So I, I stopped doing that a little while back. I actually, like, I want to say like a year and a half ago, and maybe it's been two years, I'm not sure. I did a, a, a forum asking people what they liked and disliked about me. And the only consistent negative thing I got was that they hated that I wore sunglasses. 
Andy says, I'm writing an article with a roundup of the videos, and I do mention that your video title is clickbait. I mean, it's not entirely clickbait. You know, they, for some people, that will probably be the end of their affiliate marketing days. But I mean, yeah, I mean, sometimes you have to, you have to play the game, you know? <clears throat> Craig says, I think they have been waiting to cut the program, but did it while everyone is distracted. I completely agree. This completely reeks of that. And it's just, People I get it, you know, on some level because they probably don't need affiliate. I can almost guarantee that they don't. But it's just a horrible timing, and I don't know. It's just a not a nice way to go about it. I would have actually understood them cutting the program altogether more than what they did, to be honest. Chris, is Amazon affiliate dead? I was just getting started. I mean, again, I don't like saying something is dead, but they cut the percentage that you're going to make by so much. I don't see how it could possibly be profitable. Oh, I, I mean, I don't want to discourage you. There are definitely other ways to do affiliate marketing, but I don't feel like Amazon is a good way to do it anymore because like you have to sell so much to make so little, you know? Kamar asks what's going on with Amazon affiliate. They announced, I want to say Monday, or maybe it was two days ago or something like that, that they dramatically slashed the commissions that a lot of categories make because, um, well, honestly, their response was basically because fuck you, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> Pardon my language, but that's what it amounted to in my mind. So unfortunately, it's going to be very difficult for Amazon affiliates to make any money, in my opinion. I just don't see how they can do it. Maybe I'm wrong and I would love to be proven wrong, but I mean, numbers don't lie. I mean, they can actually, numbers can be displayed in a way that they lie, <laughs> to be perfectly honest, but you, you, you get my point, I think. Ross says, liking the earlier live today, Still, it's still light here. Awesome. Glad I could uh, I do that. Like I said, I, I try to mix it up a little bit so I can accommodate as many people as possible. And today I have a, a Q&A webinar in Superstar SEO Academy, which I assume you will be attending, Ross, at 3 p.m. And then... Um, and then I have a call at 4 p.m., and then I have a lot of work to do today as well. So I figured this was going to be my only window. Jim says, has the camera moved? I feel like my perspective is off. Your perspective may be off, but it has nothing to do with the camera. Oh, burn. John says, I posted this in the Facebook group. Hope you don't mind, but my Google Analytics is showing data for the same page in two separate sections. Only difference is one has capitals and one has and one doesn't. Any thoughts on why it's split? What do you mean by two separate sections? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Excuse me, guys. I got about five more pages I need to post this to. What are the best alternatives of Amazon affiliate? Well. First of all, if you really have to do affiliate, I, I personally, I'm not a huge fan of it as a primary business model, although I do like affiliate. Um, I would find if you, but if you have to do affiliate, I would find direct to vendor programs. So example, I have a site in the nootropic space and I use on it, on it labs, whatever they're called. I may not be pronouncing that right. I don't know. Um, but I use their direct affiliate program rather than going through a marketplace like Amazon. You can also do quick bank share of sale, CJ, all those things if you want to. Um, you know, and then there's a lot of good affiliate programs out there, uh, like Purple, if you want to sell like mattresses, has a good one. And you're just going to have to find other alternatives, in my opinion. I don't see how you can possibly be profitable with Amazon. Is Google AdSense the alternative to Amazon affiliate? It's one alternative. I actually saw a uh, a post in Facebook that referenced a Twitter, a few Twitter posts from Charles Float where he said he did the math and you could actually make more with uh, AdSense or other ad type networks than you could with Amazon affiliate. So I didn't look at it to be honest, but it is one alternative. Again, there again though, it has a lot of the same drawbacks because you're still sending traffic to somebody else's business 
and giving other people customers instead of building up your own. So that's why I don't like Amazon as like a main business model, or, or not Amazon, affiliate as a main business model, as much as I like it as a supplement to, to an existing business. Several people on uh, Instagram, I am Chris Edge says I need to learn this. Dude, if you wanna learn freelancing, check out, uh, I'll drop, a, well, I don't really know how to drop a link on Instagram, but uh, you can check me out on Facebook or on YouTube and I have a link to a free freelancing course. And then I have some affiliate marketing training you can hook up, you can get hooked up with as well. So check me out on both of those. You've been looking into ClickFunnels. ClickFunnels is a great product for building funnels. It's, it's maybe a little overrated, but you can definitely, if you have a method to use it to make money, whether it's doing lead generation or selling a physical product or digital product, it's definitely going to make your life a lot easier. They do a great job of convincing you that it's a, a magic money maker. It's not, but it is a good product and they have an amazing uh, marketing, whatever strategy, technique, culture, whatever you want to call it, you know? So Smith, who I assume will also be attending this afternoon's webinar, says, in your experience, what is the best way to make money with affiliate? Number one, blog site. Number two, review site. Number three, comparison site. Number four, coupon site. Number five, what do you recommend based on your experience? So if your goal is to have an affiliate website, it is to have a broad topic that you can review products and services in that niche. So like I, my niche is both mostly make money online. If I were to focus on affiliate, it would be a blog on different programs and products and things that did that. It wouldn't necessarily be a review, but it would, I guess it's a kind of a review. It would be talking about it. So I guess that, however, if you wanted to go into a more niche niche, you know, dog training or something like that, I would think that a blog site would be better than a review site because you can draw in a lot of traffic from a lot of different angles and then sell them on a lot of different things. So dog food, dog toys, dog training, dog, I don't know, what other, whatever other things there are for dogs. You know, cats are the superior animal, so I don't know why I always use dogs as my niche example. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. John says, the analytics is split. I'm not sure if you can see my Imgur link. It shows what I'm talking about. No, I can't see it here, unfortunately. Uh, I'll take a look. If you posted it in the group, I'll take a look later on today, if that's okay. But I, I just not, I'm, I be honest though, I'm not super good with analytics. So hopefully somebody else will be able to help you as well. It's just, it's just not my strength. The mobile gamer says, please tell me the best way to monetize my SEO skill. Any quick money way? Absolutely. List your services on legit and then go and find jobs that people need in SEO as well that you can do on our job board. And then take advantage of all the free marketing opportunities we give you on legit as well. That's the number one way to get SEO money today. The number two way would be to start selling clients. If you already have the SEO skill, you can, uh, you can start getting paid that way too. So those are the two fastest ways to get paid doing SEO is marketplace freelancing is number one and client is number two. Technically client does takes about the same amount of time, but if you don't have like a broad skill set, you probably shouldn't be selling to local businesses. And I'm not saying that that's you, the mobile gamer. I just know that some people will start selling and not even know how to do what it is they're selling. That's not to say you have to master what it is that you're selling. But you should at least but you should at least have enough knowledge, you know. I am Chris Edge. Yeah, just check check me out on uh, Facebook and I can hook you up with that or you can check out uh, I'm sorry, the URL is a little too complicated to say, so I need to make a shorter one. but just look maybe you can just Google uh, legit freelancing mastery and that that's a free a freelancing course. And then affiliate marketing, you can check out my channel and there's some free stuff on there. And then I have Superstar SEO Academy as well. So th those are kind of the places to learn that. And all right, guys, I'm done sharing it around. Yeah, all done sharing. So now I can focus a little better. YouTube doing well today. Uh, Prince of Peace Productions says, what's up, Chris? It's been a long time since I caught you live. Oh, yeah, it has been. I'm glad you can make it today. 
Hope you're doing well. <laughs> Daniel says, suggestions on finding niche markets for affiliate marketing. I would just look around you, you know, like, I mean, it's a little easier, a little more difficult now, but now that you can't like do things, but some of my best ones were uh, not in the niche, but some of the best ways I found them. I remember I would be on the elliptical at the gym back when we could go places <laughs> and I would just watch commercials and say, Hey, that's an interesting niche. That's how I came up with my first site. Uh, my get rid of cable site. Another way to do it is to just think about what interests you and then make turn that, you know, find a way to monetize that. Almost anything has an affiliate program if you look hard enough, although Amazon screwing everybody kind of made that more difficult. So those are kind of my suggestions. Just look for things that people are buying and just see if there's an affiliate program. There almost always is. And then you can also just jump on like the affiliate network sites like your uh, Max Bounty, CJ, um, ClickBank and OfferVault and so on and uh, just see get an idea for niches there and then maybe find an affiliate program there, or at least give you an idea of where to go search for other affiliate programs. But really it, you should just look for something that you can monetize in a way that you will make an ROI. So that's kind of why I think Amazon is kind of dead because you can't make an ROI. You're going to have to invest so much to rank for like best plasma TV screens or something. And that's a terrible example, but, but, and then you're only going to get, you know, one to 3% of the commission on that. So, and it's going to take hundreds and hundreds and maybe thousands of dollars to rank for those kinds of terms if you're going to do it for like niche blogs. So I don't know. I hope, I hope I answered that. If not, if you need me to clear that up, let me know. But that's kind of my, my thoughts on that. Mike just joined. Hey, what's up, Mike? And we're caught up on questions. We're live on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Good turnout so far today. Seems like this uh, earlier in the day might make a difference. Who knows? So, grab a little water here. I started to hang up my whiteboard that it hasn't been updated for about two years today. And then I just got distracted. Also, I don't want to like waste a paper towel wiping it off because God knows you can't find those anywhere. So I'm gonna have to find another way to clean off what's on there. Ahmed, a member of team legit says, Hola, what would be the off page strategy for a SaaS product? a 10 page website. So you got to kind of figure it out. I mean, it would be this, you know, it's just going to be really high, like quality slash authority links, things like uh, really high end guest posts. And I mean, ones on sites where you take the time to really like build a relationship with the blogger and then stuff like Forbes and those types of links will help. And that's kind of it, you know, other than that, you just want to have your foundations in place. And I don't mean foundation links. I mean, foundations. Uh, yeah. So, you know, dude, you can message me about that and we can talk a little bit more, but your, your main focuses are going to be like brand. And then you're going to have to get some really do some good keyword research. So for example, I don't want to give it away, but I had a client that was a marketing software for a popular platform and they did well for, platform uh, marketing. I can't, I, it's kind of hard. I, I'll tell you in private what it was, but that that's kind of what I would do. I hope that answered that a little bit. Excuse me. Jim says, any good suggestion for a desktop background? The legit logo by far. That's what's on mine. Matter of fact, Pow. See, that's my desktop background. I don't really see that there are any other options at all. <laughs> Glenn says, hey, Chris. Hey, Glenn. Good to see you, buddy. Patrick says, hi. What's up, Patrick? Ahmed says, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Like, I know that had to be a little bit vague. I don't want to 
I can give you a specific example and I think that will help. I just don't want to give it away because I don't think that the client would appreciate that. What are the top three new <laughs> SEO lessons you learned in the last seven days? Um, or, I mean, last seven days is a bit, uh, uh, narrow. Uh, the one thing I've been doing is naming my YouTube lives rather than putting the, the name of the show on it, on the, as the title and description and what have you. I'm finding that putting an SEO term in the title and description, and I should have known this anyway, but, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, but, um, but I'm finding that helps them rank and get more traffic and views and all that good stuff. So, uh, that's probably the only one in the last seven days. Did, you know, let me, let me just add on to that. And that's be, that's some people are probably like balking at that, but like, there's only so much to learn. Like I know that people love new knowledge and things like that, but it, uh, there's just, there's only, you don't need anything beyond the basics 90% of the time. That number's com pulled completely out of my neck, but yeah. So I hope that answered that. Patrick says, hey, any suggestions on good landing page for a local service company? I'm not sure if you mean by a good landing page. Do you mean like what it should look like or what tool to build it with? I'm not sure what you mean by a good landing page. Can you maybe clarify for me? Craig says, where do you get your business shirts made? I'm having trouble finding anything good. Some of these I had made locally by a good friend of mine. Uh, I don't know that he does anything online. I can find out. Uh, otherwise, I think that what we're using for now for uh, for legit merch that you can find at, mer I think it's merchandise.legit.com. I think we're using Printify. We were using Gearbubble for a while, but their integration was kind of hard to use. So. Printify or Gearbubble, I think, and maybe somebody else can answer that as well. Saddam says, does YouTube SEO has a demand, like offering as a service? I would think so, yeah. I know that uh, Chris SEO on Legit does very well with it. I have an SEO or a YouTube SEO service as well. So yeah, I, I think there is. And if there's not, there should be because it's very helpful. Anna... Ivishna.ru just joined that on Instagram. Patrick says, look like a landing page for Facebook ads. Yeah, so you want to have, and it, this is just general advice because you have to test, but you want to have a call to action of some sort immediately available. You want it to be super duper simple on what people are supposed to do. So whether it's enter their contact info, or whatever, and you want to make sure that it's mobile responsive. But basically it's, uh, and I got this from Becker. He said it needs to be push the button to get pancakes. They, there needs to be a great big button that says push here to get pancakes. And then when they push it, they get some pancakes. Meaning that it needs to be super clear what they need to do. And then it needs to happen immediately. So have it where it's immediately obvious what people should do and they can just do it without much thought because uh, People will make things complicated, and I'll just leave it at that. Keith, what's up, Keith? Waiting for the day you play that guitar, Chris? You're going to be waiting for a while, Keith. <laughs> John says, what is the biggest SEO loss you've had in your career from penalties, algorithm updates, et cetera, and how did you recover? So the, I guess... I guess it would be in 2014 when I think it was Penguin 2.0 came out, uh, it, my get rid of cable site got penalized. And uh, I'm so glad today that it did because that's what made me figure out that I needed to learn more on how to get it unpenalized. I didn't even know what, that it was true, what a penalized penalty was or that I was even doing SEO. But I needed to learn how to make more money with it. And that's when I bought Source Phoenix and that's what led me down the path to where I am now. So. That was how I recovered was learning how to get back into it. The other penalty I've had was on my agency site, superstarseo.com, because that happened because people, when you, some people don't like me, I'll just leave it at that. And I got that, I got that done with the help of a gentleman who, God, 
and his name, Rick Lomas helped me recover that. So those are kind of the two big ones. Rich says Teespring. Yeah, Teespring is one. Shop.legit.com. That's what uh, Jim said. That's where you can get all the legit merch that you could ever want and more. Printify.com. Uh, I think that was for, who was asking about that? That was Craig. So here you go, Craig. Printify.com. Daniel says, do you see other companies following suit with Amazon cutting affiliate fees? I don't know. I don't know what to expect. I wouldn't think so because other companies that have affiliate programs will probably need them more than Amazon did. Amazon is probably thinking, you know, and, and it's probably not quite this blatant, but we literally everybody on earth buys from us at this point. What do we need affiliates to send us traffic for is my guess, you know, and they're powerful enough, you know, what are you going to do about it? So I, I don't think so. I don't think that will happen, but still uh, affiliate marketing has its problems compared to freelancing because with affiliate marketing, like I've said, I'm, I'm banging this drum pretty hard today. Let me move my mouse so it's not showing up on Instagram. Um, that you're always sending traffic to somebody else's business. You're giving somebody else's business customers and so on. So that's kind of my biggest problem with affiliate marketing. And it's basically just like having a boss in a lot of ways, you know, that can just decide not to pay you anymore. And that probably defeats the purpose for people that I uh, want to do affiliate marketing. Craig says, thanks guys. Keith says, hi, Chris and Chris, Jim and everyone. Rich says, can you talk a little bit about YouTube service? What are you doing? It's mostly uh, linking and social signals and things like that. Uh, if you're talking about my YouTube service on legit, it's not something I push a lot because it's uh requires a lot of extra work on my end because if I don't do it to a brand new video, it won't do much good, but it's mostly off page SEO. Glenn says I use for custom embroidery and screen print gear, queensboro.com. Fen Yunus just joined on Instagram as did photography videography. I think that's what it is. Keith says, did we lose the feed? I don't think so. That you're always sending me traffic. Uh, no, no. Keith looks like we're good. So if you're, I mean, if you think if you lost if you lost your feed, you can't hear me saying this. But if you're having trouble, just refresh or something. You should probably be okay. What are your three favorite affiliate programs? I like Legit's number one, Superstar SEO Academy is number two, and no, I mean those are tick my favorites. But to the real answer to your question would probably be. Uh, AppSumo has a good one, although in my opinion, their offers have gotten not as good over the last year or two, but AppSumo has a good affiliate program. Um, on it has been very good to me. Uh, if you want to get into Tropics, although that's extremely competitive, although not as much as it was in like 2016. Uh, what else, what else, what else? ClickFunnels has made some changes to theirs, so their affiliate program is not as great as it used to be. Uh, that's all I can think of at the moment. I'm not sure. Keith says, okay, I can see you again. Good, good. Rich says, I've had YouTube channels shut down for being too commercial, but it's okay to pay them for true view ads all day long running video commercials. Frustrating. That's interesting. I've heard of YouTube channels getting shut down. I've not heard of them getting shut down for being too commercial. I'd be interested to learn more about that because I haven't heard that before. I've heard about them getting shut down or demonetized, but not for being too commercial. Ross says, can you ship legit merch to the UK? Really want a tea? Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, Keith, who is a couple comments up from you, I used to do like giveaways of free t-shirts and Keith won like four weeks in a row. So Keith has like four or five legit t-shirts now. And he lives in the UK was kind of the point of that. So yeah, I don't know how long it's going to take right now, given everything, but yeah, it can absolutely do that. Martin says, my domain has been hit by a health update in November. It's gone from 60K visitors to 15K per month. Do you have any suggestions on what to do now? Okay, so did it lose Google ranking or is it just losing traffic? If it lost ranking, then there's things you can do. But if it's just, if it lost traffic, that could just be 
a consequence of what's going on right now, you know? So if you give me a little bit more information, I'll be happy to give you my, my thoughts. Glenn says, are you streaming to Instagram? Yes, I am. I'm at superstar SEO. You can also check it out at uh, chrismwalker.blog. Will take you to my Instagram as well. I have those like uh, unique domain or those top those unique TLDs for a lot of stuff because one, I think it's just kind of cool, <laughs> and two, I uh, I find it easier to remember than saying Instagram.com slash slash. You know what I mean? So there you go. Can you help ranking? So I'd have to look into that specific thing, but. Um, if you want to send me over the link, it's kind of hard without a specific site, but if, yeah, I'll be happy to take a look if you want to send me over the link on like Facebook or something and then give me a little bit more background, but I would have to look into specifically what happened. You know, it's hard for me to do an analysis without a specific thing to analyze. So I'll be happy to take a look for you though, buddy. So just find me on Facebook and shoot me a message. I think I've seen you on Facebook before. Forgive me if not. I wish that YouTube had a better DM system. Keith says, I'm in the UK and have several legit shirts. Awesome. Sarawar says, hi, how are you? I'm doing great, Sarawar. I hope you are as well. <clears throat> Smith says, if someone dares you to rank a site for a million dollars, one condition you have to choose between on-page or off-page SEO, brand new site, one year old, this is really specific, brand new site, one year old, currently ranking on page three on Google. What method do you choose to rank page one and why? If it's on page three, I would go with off page. This is kind of a strange question, but uh, I would go with off page because I can fire links and eventually get it there. So I would go with off page because, you know, it's just you have unlimited firepower there. If you want you to do the on page, if it's not there, if it doesn't get you the rest of the, in this one unique scenario. If it doesn't get you the rest of the way there, there's not you don't have any more ammunition to fire. But with links, you have an unlimited number of bullets in the gun. You can tell I'm American, right? Using a firearm analogy. <laughs> Silver asks, have you ever done media buying by running offers from affiliate networks in DSPs? If no, is there a reason why not? I don't know what DSPs are. I'm very bad with acronyms. But if you're asking, have I run paid advertising to affiliate networks? No, not really. Uh, I've always been afraid to. I've always heard horror stories of accounts getting shut down. But, or do you mean doing like, uh, I, I don't know, to be perfectly honest. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure what you mean. Have you done, let me read it again. Have you ever done media buying? When I hear media buying, I think of doing ads for other people. That may not be what you mean. By running offers from affiliate networks in DSPs. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what you're asking. I apologize if I'm being dense. Patrick says, would you do an SEO analysis of a website? I'll be happy to take a look, sure. Uh, but just before you do that, before I do that, there's always a chance if you post a website that somebody else will see it and do something or report something or mess with you in some way. So if just be careful before you share it publicly, but I'll be happy to take a look if you're cool with that. Trying to do DSP. Yeah, I feel like I'm I'm missing. I feel like I'm being dumb and not getting the point of this question, but I'm not sure what you mean. But yeah, if you want, if you're okay with that, Patrick, I'll be happy to. So just whack over the link. That sounded bad. And uh, Martin, yeah, feel free to share that link with me on Facebook, and I'll take a look for you as soon as I have some time. And wow, good session today. Lots of folks on. And we're already 35 minutes in. Instagram's being a little shy today, but that's okay. Azure Flame just joined on Instagram. What software do you use for streaming? I use StreamYard. Let me get you a link for that. That comes up a lot. That question. I wish they had a better affiliate program.
Hey, StreamYard, there's a link to that. Daniel says, what are three legit gigs you would refer to us to buy for a brand new website, not social media accounts? If it's a local site, like a you know, local business, I would do citations. And I can get you specific links for each of those. I would do uh, social signals. And what else? Probably some foundation links. Those would probably be my top three. Do you want me to uh, drop the links to those two for you, Daniel? I'll be happy to. Craig says, I already answered that. I dropped that. It's called StreamYard, and I dropped the, uh, the link in the chat. So let me know if you can find it. Chris, when is the next site review? I watched your competitor analysis video, and it was super helpful. No, um, you mean an academy? I need to get right back around to that. To be honest, I kind of forget sometimes. So tag me in the group and just remind me, if you don't mind, in the, the academy group, not the free group. Silver says a DSP is a demand side portal like propeller ads. Oh, okay. Media buy means you grab an offer from an affiliate network and set it up as a campaign at another network and buy traffic. No, I've never done that. That's kind of cool though. I'm going to look into that, but no, I haven't done that. That's uh, that's interesting. No, I, I don't have any experience with that. I'd be interested to hear more about it. If you have some resources. Diogo says, hello, Chris, I'm you legit. And I would like to ask you about the platform's expectations regarding services related to the provider's artistic development in the indus, the image editing market. How are you planning to give more exposure to other categories such images as image, uh, as the image editing one? We actually are working, uh, I don't wanna give out our exact plans, but we're working directly to generate more for, not specifically for image editing, because don't take this the wrong way, but that's a little bit more specific, but we've been focusing a lot on the video and voiceover creation and like logo design categories, which will in turn bring in more creative people. We're doing some direct outreach campaigns and some ad advertising as well that we expect to bring in more business to those. It has actually been growing. I have numbers to back that up, but you're right. As, as it is right now, SEO is where a lot of the, the, tra the services come from, but it's growing. So just, uh, Take advantage of uh, the, the free uh, the free things that we give you to get your service in front of people. If it's just image editing, you may want to come up with an angle a little bit because you know I'll remove your background or you know I'll touch up your photos. People will use that when they need it, but it's uh it's kind of specific situations as opposed to some other things. But we do have I, I can like I say I don't want to give away our strategy because every time I've done something like that, it's backfired on me but we're doing some direct outreach to people that will bring people with them. And that's kind of the best way I know how to answer that. So Daniel says, I'd love to get the specific links from you. Sure. Always happy to share links. Just give me a minute. Over on Instagram, Legitcom waved at me. What's up, Legitcom? I'm a big fan of yours. I'm even rocking your t-shirt. Zachary Gaza just joined on Instagram. All right, so. Here we go for citations. and social signals. And let me grab foundations. This is a bit of a hidden gem of a service. That's one I'm about to do. It doesn't get near the sales that I think it deserves. So there you go, Daniel. I hope the, uh, let me make sure you can see those. Sometimes, uh, sometimes YouTube will block them, but there you go. Whoa. Patrick said, yes, please just drop those links. Okay. I dropped those for you, chat, Patrick. How do you stream Insta with StreamYard? It is not one of the options and I can't figure out how to get the key. Um, you can't, as far as I know, I've only found one desktop software for 
Instagram streaming and it wasn't very good. I literally have my phone propped up <laughs> against my monitors and I'm streaming with it that way. Uh, Instagram is just not great for that. It, it, there's no software that I know of that's reliable for it, unfortunately. Rich says, if I'm working on ranking a money site and get it to first page, what changes can accidentally bump it off the first page? Uh, going too heavy with anchor text on from your links, getting low quality links sent to it, or screwing part of my language with the on page too much and doing something wrong. The, the on page one is not so bad because it's easy to reverse, but you don't want to go too heavy or too light or do the anchor text wrong and you don't want low quality links. And of course, the other thing that can accidentally bump it off would be your competitor saying, hey, this guy's moving up the page, we better work harder. So those are the three things or however many that was. Oops, Daniel says, thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Hey, Chris, what service would you recommend to get URLs for PBNs? Do you mean to where to get PBN links? I'm not sure what you mean, or do you mean to buy domains? I guess if you mean buy domains, I'll, I'll get you a link for that. I mean, ultimately I recommend you find your own through auction, but there are some, this is the service I like for expired ones. So give me just a sec here. I'll drop the link to that as well. If you mean something else, let me know. Oops. Okay, one second, I'll get you a link to the service I recommend for that. <laughs> Been working with him for years. What's the dumbest mistake you have done professionally? Oh boy. Uh, let me answer this a few different ways. The first one was when I was in politics. After a big campaign I was on ended, I of course was out of work, which is just the nature of that industry. And then I got offered a position with a activist group, but they really paid really bad and I said no. I regret not taking that because I think that could have helped further my career as in, in politics. So that's probably the dumbest one. Uh, second dumbest would be in the current career, I guess would be sometimes I've tried to, to scale too fast and didn't ramp up a, a, at like a level re related to my sales, if that makes sense. That'd probably be the, the second dumbest one or waiting too long to hire. You know, that's probably a better answer. Waiting too long to hire someone. Georgie was my first employee. If you, I, I let's say team member. He was my first team member. And uh, I hired him in 2017. And up till then I had done literally everything in my business myself. And I would be so much further along if I had, hadn't waited so long. So that's probably the dumbest one. Ones. Smith says, Chris, I'm fairly new to the SEO community. One thing I am finding curious is why people warn against sharing the site on the group. Why would people do anything to destroy the site? Is there fear based on experience or is it just the way in the SEO world? The answer is because people suck. Let me give you some examples. For example, one time somebody said, I just signed a client and I need some help with whatever advice and they posted the link. Someone in the group saw that, contacted the client and told them that they posted that in the group. Another one is literally every site I've ever shown publicly has either been hacked, attempted to hack, attempted to DDoS, spammed, negative SEO. Literally every single site I have ever shown has had something like that done to it. Um, and it's just there's nasty people out there, unfortunately. And they're the minority, but it only takes one. So there's that. And then if it's like a client site, you know, you want... You want, somebody might try to steal your client. If it's a niche site, somebody might try to copy your niche and outrank you. It's just, there's there's tons of reasons not to. And it's just, unfortunately, given a chance to be crappy, people will, will be crappy. And that's not all people. In fact, that's not even most people, but it's enough people that you need to be cautious, unfortunately. Diogo says, thank you for answering, Chris. Let me just add that I'm not regularly editing images like that. Can you make, have a look at my profile and maybe tell me where I can improve? Sure. Drop me a link or tell me your username and I'll be happy to take a look. Diego, uh, 
Okay, so profile is diggy way. Because I can't copy from there, unfortunately. So anyway, I like that name. So let's bring it up on screen. All righty. First of all, your I like your uh, avatar, although it's not you or branded. I think it's something that people will remember. Looks like Chandler in the background. <laughs> Hi, my name is Diogo Silva, and I work. My work consists of me creating collages of images and transforming them into surrealistic and psychedelic paintings, giving a new color. I can use pictures of your pet and tell. That's really cool. Let's take a look at this. Uh, transform portraits sent by you into psychedelic paintings worthy of a museum. Well, that's really unique. Welcome to Diggy Way. My name is Diogo. Okay, you have a great sales page so far. Lots of examples of your work. Great sales copy. I actually really, really like this. I tell you what, dude, first of all, if you're in the, the Facebook group, be sure to share this because I think this will get a lot of eyeballs. Oh, and then take, um, and just use all the things we give you, the roundup and all those things that'll get, because I think it's just going to take one or two to like start the fire for you. And it, you just signed up yesterday. So that's, that's great. And that you put together this great of a sales page. And I, dude, I might be able to hook you up with something too. Let me, maybe I'll make a, make an order with you and we'll see what we can do too. So. I'm going to uh, find your comment here and tag Jim and have him look at it as well. So, yeah, dude, I'll, I'll, I'll message you. But, yeah, take advantage of the Legit Facebook group. Share that on Legit Monday. Put it in the roundup. Uh, we have some creative submissions that we're doing. So let, let us get, like, something with us in it or the Legit logo in it. And I think that once a couple people see what you do, they're going to like it because this is really, really high-quality stuff. So. There you go. All right. So let me go ahead and find this comment and tag Jim so he can look at it as well. Oh, what just happened? There we go. Let me, there we go. One second, folks. There we go. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, dude, you're really talented. Well, uh, I think once you get a sale or two, you're gonna really take off. Amir says, thank you. Thank you, Amir. Patrick says, you need to add a favorites or save for later so we can save these jobs. We have that. Let me, uh, let me demonstrate that right now. I love it when people team me up to be able to uh, show legit and share share things that you can do. So, for example, suppose you want to favorite. Let's find Diggy again. Diggy. So search. There's two ways to do it. You can see this little heart right here. Just click on that. Added to favorites. Oops. Added to favorites. The other way is to go to the, the self. And there's a little heart right there. Add the favorites. And then you can just give them up to favorite services. And there it is. So yeah, you can you can totally uh, do that. You can totally find heart your favorites or whatever. So hopefully you guys can see that. If you can't, let me just try that one more time. You can just click this little heart here. That removes it. Click it again. That adds it. And then to find them, you just go to buying and favorite services. And you'll see all your favorites right there. So there you go.
Hey Chris, I think the link you gave me was for an artist. I was looking for the domain guy you said you worked with for years. Sorry, ignore my comment. Oh yeah, sorry. That, yeah, I, scroll up a little bit and you'll you'll find the uh, the domain guy. Chris says Jim Sabellico. That's funny that I heard that. Wow, today's session flew by. We've been here for fifty minutes already. It's so strange how that works, but I'm glad this is going well. On Instagram, we got Kathy, we got Hassan, we got. Salvocan88. So guys, we got about nine minutes left and then I'm gonna have to call it a day because I have a webinar at 3 p.m. in Superstar SEO Academy. If you wanna check out an example webinar that we do for Superstar SEO Academy, I'm gonna drop a link here in the chat. It's uh, superstarseo.training. That's a webinar that Scott, Jim, and Jeff and I did a while back. So if you, uh, you want to check that out, I think you should. Maurice Maid just joined on Instagram. What's up, Maurice? Abbas just joined. What's up, Abbas? Patrick says thanks. No, thank you, Patrick. Always a pleasure. So we got about eight minutes left. Anybody have anything else they want to talk about? It's been a great session, lots of engagement today. I'm, I'm really enjoying this. I mean, I enjoy it every day, but it's a really good one today. So it really gets me pumped and excited to do, to do business, you know? Chris, what's your favorite niche to rank on? Honestly, I like to make money online niche. I like, it's just what I know, it's what I do. But if you mean like interest niche, it used to be electronics, uh, cause I did, you know, I had the get rid of cable site. I have, I've had success in the nootropic space, basically things that interest me. And I don't unfortunately have that many interests outside of work, but But yeah, those are kind of, make money online is definitely my favorite, whether it's software, training, tools, that sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, I think those are it. What else is there? There's, I don't know, there's other good ones, but they don't necessarily appeal to me. Diogo says, thanks so much, Chris. I just made a quick one for you before the live stream began. Oh, sweet. Let's see if I can't find that and bring it up. Oh, that's awesome. I look like, uh, I don't know, I'm not gonna say what I look like. I, that looks really cool, dude. I, that's really awesome, thank you so much. It looks like uh, the Phil Collins video where the, the, the floating head in, you know, in the air tonight. That's really cool, dude, thank you. I appreciate that, you're very, you're very talented. So guys, definitely check out Diogo on uh, Legit. He is, what was it, Diggy Wag or Wiggy? Diggy way, diggy way is what it was. That's that's sick, dude. Thank you. Saba says, "What do you do in tough niches where it's hard to rank well? Long tails. How do you measure progress step by step? Search Console rank tracker. So, <clears throat> yeah, long tails is a great way to start. Ultimately, I don't worry too much about competition. The only evaluation I really do is how much is it going to cost me to to rank for it versus how much can I expect to make? Because I know that if one person can be number one, so can another person and that can be me. Uh, so that's kind of my answer to that. How do I measure progress step by step? Yeah, rankings. I just use a rank tracker like a pro rank tracker. I don't really use search console. I don't find their, ironically, I don't find their data to be particularly reliable. So yeah. So I hope that answers your question. You basically, you just have to, Matt, just have to go for it. If you, once you decide that it's worth going for, just go all in. And that's my advice on a lot of things in life. Studio Liberty Tula just joined on Instagram as did Z Haha. <laughs> What's up guys? Saba says, 
Thanks for this live session. Thank you. We do these every day. And if you want to get notified, I'll, let me get you the link so you'll know when we go live. And we do this almost every day. I think the only days I've missed recently were the Saturday before Easter and Easter because I figured, I mean, as much as we're allowed to right now, that people would be spending time with their family. So, But if you sign up to this, you'll get an email every day when we, when we go live that we're going live. And you'll get nothing else to that email or to that list. The people on that list will get nothing else other than, hey, we're about to go live and this is what we're going to talk about. It's not like the master list or anything like that. Jim says, found my new wallpaper, and he's got a link to it. So let's see what Jim concocted for us. Not concocted. Let's see what kind of wallpaper Jim found for us. And I do apologize when I have uh, on-screen stuff there, um, Instagram, because you know, I know you can't see it. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. It reminds me of that uh, Mitch Hedberg thing where he's like, hey, the people listening to this on CD will, will wonder what I'm talking about. Hey, buddy, nice shirt. So that was my Mitch Hedberg. Gene, let's see what Jim's got for us. Whoa, that's really sexy. Everybody should download that and make that their background for sure. That's really great, dude. That's got a very big uh, Jackson Pollock effect to it. And it, that's really, really cool. I'm gonna make that my background right now. And I'm gonna drop it in the chat so everybody else can too. All right, and let's get off screen in case, thank God I didn't have anything embarrassing on my desktop. <laughs> and I'm gonna make that my wallpaper right now. Okay. I'm trying to see. Film. See how that looks. All right, I'll let you guys check it out now. So we're gonna share, let me move this over here. Then share screen, share. There we go, that's my, my desktop now. That's sexy as hell. Let's see, let's see what looks better. Does fit look better? Eh. Stretch, definitely not that. Tile, center, no, I don't like that. I guess what I could do is make the background colors kind of, eh, but that won't work either. Span, no. So I think that fit, and we'll go fill. I think fill looks best. So there we go. So that is now my background, my wallpaper. And I hope it'll be some of yours soon as well. So let's stop sharing. Instagram, we got about two minutes left. Imran says AdSense versus Amazon affiliate, which one is better? Uh, considering that Amazon just screwed their uh, affiliates pretty hard, I would say that it's definitely uh, AdSense at this point. But you can still use a little bit of both. But I would find a better affiliate program than Amazon at this point. Kathy says, love the new background. Thank you, Kathy. I do too. Jim says, more sizes coming soon. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I'd love to have one that's a bit more widescreen friendly. So yeah, that's cool though. Hey, guys, take advantage of that resource. It's uh, it? blog.legit.com slash legit wallpaper. So there it is. All right, Instagram, thanks for hanging out with me today. I got to cut you off because it's going to shut, shut me off in just a minute. So thanks a lot, guys. We'll do this again tomorrow. Um, I don't know how you can get notified on Instagram, but if you go to superstarseo.com slash the SEO water cooler, you'll get email notifications every day when we go live on Instagram. So thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you tomorrow on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. We're probably going to cut that out soon, too. Share the story. And plow. All right, guys, we got no time left. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here as well. Great hour today. Great session. Lots of interaction. Lots of good 
conversation back and forth. If you're in Superstar SEO Academy, you should join us in just a little bit at 3 p.m. to for our bi-weekly Q&A webinar. If you're not in Superstar SEO Academy, join right now and you, you can be on it as well. So I'm gonna drop a link if you wanna go ahead and sign up right now. The goal of these, is not to, these lives is not to sell you things, but I am a marketer, so sometimes I just can't help myself. <laughs> so there is the link that, superstarseo.com slash monthly. And yeah, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Craig says, have a good rest of the day, Chris. You do the same. No, oh, why didn't it? You do the same, Craig. Um, all right, guys, we do these every day. So uh, we'll see you again tomorrow. Same bat, well, not same bat time, but same bat channel. Uh, figure out which one out of life and go out and get it because you owe it to yourself and you owe it to the world. See you tomorrow, everybody.